We'll start by creating a ring component. So we'll create a function here. We will return an animated dot view because this will be animated. We also know that we are going to need to stagger each of these rings, so we will say that it receives a delay. We'll need to then render our rings here. And we'll start with four rings. And we'll then create a ring style. For our ring style, we'll just say that uh, we have a width of, say, 100 a border radius of half of that at 50, a border width of 10, and we'll give our border color a nice tomato color. And then we will apply that to our ring. We see that they're stacked on top of each other and we want them to be, or they're not stacked on top of each other, so we will need to add a position of absolute and that will now allow them to stack on top of each other so they animate on top of each other. The next step is defining our animation. So we will need to use a shared value, and this will hold on to the progress of our animation. And we'll just call this ring. With that shared value, we now need to create an animated style for this particular uh, ring. So we'll say use animated style which then we can return various values, like for example, the opacity. And we might not want the opacity of our ring to start off at full opacity, so we'll start it at 0.8, and then as it animates, we'll just subtract the ring.value as it transitions from zero to one. This will allow it to slowly fade out as ring.value approaches one. Uh, then we need to do a scale. So we need to supply a transform and a scale, and we'll need to use interpolation. What this does is it takes a value and an input range, so we'll say from zero to one, and an output range, and so we'll start at zero and go to four of a scale, so basically we'll get four times larger as it fades out. So we'll give this a name, a variable name, call it style, and we will apply it to our ring. Once I save, we can see that now it disappears because the shared value is at zero, and when we interpolate our scale from zero to one, we interpolate it to zero. So now we need to trigger our animation, and we can do that with a use effect. We don't want this to run every single time this component is remounted, so we'll just give it a dependency array that is completely empty, so it will only run once. Now that that's set, we need to start our animation. So we will assign ring.value a animation, and so we will utilize the delay now, say with delay, and supply our delay that we're gonna pass in, and then we will trigger a repeat. So we want this to continually repeat. So we'll say with repeat, and then the animation that we want to run, which is a with timing animation. And we will animate that to one, with a user config of a duration, which we'll set to four seconds. And we got an error there, don't worry about that. Then for our repeat, we want to repeat a number of times, but we want to repeat for forever. So to do that, we'll set negative one. Go and fix the error, and we'll import with delay. And then additionally, we'll need to supply our delays to our rings. So we'll say ring, or sorry, delay, is equal to zero, so that our first one will animate immediately. The second will delay for one second. Then the third will delay for two seconds. And then finally, three seconds. And this will then take up our entire four second animation so that no rings are overlapping each other. Once I save this and give this a refresh, you can see that now our rings are animating and expanding to four times the size, and we never have any ring overlap, and it is a smooth, continuous flow.